Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a little get ready with me. I thought it would be nice for me to make an effort today and not sit around the house looking like an absolute toadstool. I haven't worn makeup in a long time. I basically took like my birthday weekend plus plus like a few days off and wore like literally zero makeup for the majority of the time and it has been so lovely. But today I'm running some errands and I thought it would be nice to just make an effort and I've been getting a lot of questions on certain aspects of my makeup at the moment, what I've been doing differently and also my hair so we're just lumping it in all together today. So I'm going to start with my autumn makeup routine. I've done my skincare, it's very very simple, I've just got like a mist and an oil and some lip balm and that is that is it, I keep it super super simple. But my makeup routine has actually like morphed into this hybrid of my birthday makeup which you will have seen me do a trial of in my trying on my birthday outfits video. My everyday makeup routine has taken on aspects of that, though not as full on as that video. Visually it actually looks quite similar but it's a lot lighter. But the reason that I've started taking elements of that makeup into my everyday routine is because it actually works really really well under a mask as well. So if you're looking for some tips, hopefully this video might be a little bit helpful. Maybe not. I'll leave it up to you to decide. But anyway, I'm gonna get started. Let's zoom you in. Let's zoom you in on my face. Hope you don't mind the uh, bright yellow hair slides. So skin update, can't do a get ready with me or a makeup routine without giving you a little skin update. It's not the worst. And I really was expecting it right now to be absolutely awful because we've just had my birthday. My diet completely went out the window. Everything that I have like an intolerance or a borderline allergy to was consumed. Everything that I know kind of sets my skin off was consumed. And I think I only had like two spots from it, which I'm amazed by. I've actually been trialing some new Sunday Riley products. Some of you might've seen on stories and I feel like they might be helping, but I don't want to say too loud because I might scare the good skin away. We might have some good new products because this is only like a couple of days old and it's on already on its way out which is not normal as you guys can see they stick around yeah skin is looking good i can't tell if it's because i had days off and i just wasn't stressed and i kind of don't want to want to admit that my skin issues might be stressed because that's a whole lifestyle change really isn't it anyway i'm going to be starting off by using the bare minerals complexion rescue hydrating foundation stick i believe this is called this is in the shade 06 ginger i have been using this for such a long time those of you who've watched my videos for you know more than maybe six months more than a year will definitely have seen me use this before now not only is it really light in its texture it's also really hydrating and creamy which i feel like is always beneficial for my skin but i also feel like it has good ingredients in it it's non-clogging i don't know if it's officially non-condogenic i feel like that must have to be certified right and i can't remember if it is but it definitely has like great ingredients in it i don't find it to clog my skin at all. So especially on days when I'm going out and I know I need to wear a mask, I always use it. If I'm just like in the house or I'm going like to something outdoor related where I know I'm not gonna need to wear a mask, I'll just wear like normal foundation. But this really allows my skin to breathe, I think anyway. So I like to err on the side of caution with mask wearing. But also with my skin at the moment, I feel like it's just a good, a good thing to be conscious of. So yeah, it's an old favorite of mine. I've been using it for such a long time and we are currently besties again. So what I've done is I've used shade six in the majority of areas on my face, but I actually use shade seven across my forehead because my forehead is always darker. And I find this helps me not get like a ashy cast because sometimes I put my bronzer on and it goes a bit like almost purpley and just looks so weird. So I put a warmer, darker shade on my forehead and temples because that gray cast always kicks in around my temples and it looks so so weird i also like to use a bit of shade seven on my nose as well because it's like a pinkier tone i find it helps me to just look a little bit sun kissed in it brings back the definition to my face that is normally there when i am not wearing foundation i think sometimes with foundation we can sometimes use a bit too much and it like knocks out the shape and definition on our face such a glowy foundation honestly can't recommend it enough okay so for concealer i'm going to try and not do anything heavy coverage so i'm just using the bare minerals complexion rescue foundation stick on a like little pointy i usually use these for eyeshadows these brushes but i'm just going to use that to cover my spots and kind of pinpoint conceal it on obviously most people i feel like for their blemishes would use a tiny 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 brush to pinpoint but my blemishes are so big <laughs> that i can get away with using one of these i do actually also have a tiny one but it takes me 
about a thousand years to cover anything if I use an actual pinpoint brush and then I just feel like I get angry because I feel like pinpoint concealing is such a scam. It's not. It's just my spots are so much bigger. But yeah, this covers so well. And I really like the fact that I can use the foundation to conceal because it then means that it matches my skin perfectly, which is ideal. I don't have to worry about like blending too much. These two here that are causing me issues today. And I'm just taking the excess around my nose. So that's my skin lightly concealed. I've still got a lot of marks that you can probably see kind of like beaming on through. And I did a really poor job of concealing this spot down here. I'm really annoyed about it. I used the wrong shade to start off with. I used number seven. So it's a slightly darker patch, but we'll roll with it. Once I get powder and like bronzer on, you won't be able to tell. I'm gonna use the Fenty Beauty What It Do spray. If you haven't watched my spot coverage video, um, I'll pop it in the corner up there. I wanna say it's there. One day I will learn it. But if you've watched that, you'll know after I spray my face to set it, I always do it kind of after I've done like foundation concealer. That tutorial, I'll actually do it like several times, but today I'll only do it the once, but I'm gonna move on to like my brows and eyes for now and then come back to it once it's all really nicely set. So I'm gonna be using my Too Faced Palm Springs Dreams palette. I just use the shade Cabana Time to begin with and pop this all over my eyelids. About to say eyeballs. And I take it right up to my brow bone as well. And this just creates a really nice base. And then I take the shade Rum Tiki. As you can see, my palette had an accident. It's not a well loved palette by me if um, it hasn't had a small accident at one point or another. And I just take that over, I would say two thirds of the eyelid and then work it up towards my brow bone. And I don't worry about being very precise with how far I'm going out because I'm about to clean that up later. Lots of you will know this routine already and then I just go in a second time and build that up and now I'm just going to add a little bit of the shade mocktail which is like a really nice burnt orangey colour I'm going to add that to my eyelid but just my lid and not really take it up too high and this just gives a little bit more warmth it's a nice autumnal twist on my basic makeup that never changes my next step is to map out a small wing I'm just using an angled brush and the darkest shade on this palette. This side always goes so much better than the other one. Which is annoying because this side is the side that I consider to be my good side. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and conceal. I'm gonna be using my Fenty concealer. This is the Pro Filter Concealer in the shade 270. And I pop a little bit underneath my eyes. And then I also apply it to the outer corners. And this looks crazy right now, I am aware. Those of you who aren't new here will know exactly what I'm doing. I basically take a flat brush this is like a little square topped brush and i use it to map out my eye makeup some people i know use like sticky tape and they'll just peel it off but for me i don't know number one i don't have sticky tape to hand i also just prefer doing it this way it just makes my eye makeup look so perfect and really helps to map out a wing even if i'm just using like a uh, brown eyeshadow and no like liner anything like that it almost like creates a wing and then my mascara once i apply it like follows it up and it just all works together really nicely so once i've kind of mapped that all out and got it into place i take a real techniques setting brush and i just lightly blend that in and this area here is going to look very like stark and a little bit crazy but i will come back to it later and perfect it a little bit more next step i'm going to apply a little bit of liner i know who am i it feels like we're in like 20 what is it 20 2016 all over again short hair eyeliner i do it slightly differently now and i literally just map out a really fine line and a tiny wing or i might have balls this up anyway let's see i can't do this and talk <laughs> pre-warning the other eye is not gonna look this good i don't do this every day i actually find that wearing eyeliner means that when i take my makeup off i almost have to work even though i use like an oil and it really does strip makeup off you do have to work your lashes a little bit more to get all of the product off. And I do find I lose more eyelashes. And when I do wear liquid liner, my eyelashes just look more sparse. And once I stop wearing the liner after like a couple of weeks, they go back to looking really great. So yeah, trying not to wear it too much because I really value my lash fullness now. They're not looking full at the moment. So I'm just gonna roll with it. I think I have a good thing going here. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna quickly do my brows next. I'm gonna be using the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in dark brown ash brown i feel like a lot of you already know the drill with this but i literally just take an angle brush 
and run it through the underside of my brows. I try not to go too crazy here, but I do like to define them a little bit because I think otherwise I just look like an alien. So I've only filled in the underside and now I'm just brushing my brows up using a MAC brow setting gel. Going very like Nikki makeup vibes with this where you just do a kind of minimal brow. Minimal fluffy brow, love it. I would do soap brows, but I actually have lost my little spoolie, so. Do you ever have those points where you start doing your like full makeup routine and get halfway through and just really regret it, but you've passed the point where you could just do a minimal makeup routine because I'm really having that right now. And side note on that, do you wanna see my minimal makeup routine for when I'm just like around the house and I wanna wear a little bit of makeup but not really go all out because I really enjoy that makeup routine. Next up, Bare Minerals Lash Topia Mascara. I've talked about this so much. I've used this in pretty much every tutorial for the past year or two. So we'll speed this up. But if you're new here, you need to try it. So now we are coming back to skin. I'm gonna be using the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder in Translucent Honey. This is a new shade and it's like a yellowy shade instead of their like white shade. Obviously it is a translucent powder, but even the most translucent powders can still leave a bit of a cast. So especially like for darker skin tones, this is the one. And what I do is I take my setting brush, I dip it in the powder, which I put in the lid. Tap it off and apply this pretty much all over my cheeks. I do a heavy concentration underneath my eyes because I really like this area to look very matte, but it also helps to set like my concealer and this area here. But then I also take it over my cheeks and basically anywhere that my mask would rub on. I also love using this on my cheeks where my spots are and where the majority of my blemishes are. It really mattes it down and makes them almost look like invisible. Like this one on my forehead. Once I matte it down, the light doesn't hit the bump on my forehead so it's not as visible and i don't know why i wasn't powdering sooner like how did i not realize this obviously glowy skin is amazing when your skin isn't looking so great but matte skin for me and for my breakouts it's the one you can't see the uneven texture because the light's not hitting the skin in the same way and i just think that is a game changer so i also do my chin and around my mouth very lightly. I feel like you could bake this. I think I've seen someone do that on YouTube. Maybe it was like Chloe Morello has just done that. And I think that would last really well. Honestly, normally I would use a beauty blender and slightly bake this, but I'm having issues with my beauty blender today. So we're not working well together. If you're not a fan of a matte look, then I would say to go this route and use very small light amounts. But obviously the more you set the makeup, the better it's gonna last underneath a mask. And one mistake I made early on with this is just powdering where you think you're gonna need powder. I did that and once I went in later to apply bronzer, the bronzer kind of clung more to the areas where there was powder. So not ideal, I'd say go heavier when you need it, but still add a light amount everywhere else. It also helps your skin to match up what you don't wanna do, especially if you're only powdering on blemishes or because of a mask. What you don't wanna do is like say leave your forehead. And then when you take your mask off, you've got a really glowy forehead and a matte like mouth and chin and cheek area that would be that would look slightly off so bear that in mind I just pop a light dusting like the excess that is on my brush onto my nose and same with my upper lip i don't add a huge amount of powder here because it will create like if you've got dehydrated skin you'll know you get the lines here and adding too much powder around here like powder is good here because that's where you get oily but too much powder is gonna make it look a bit liney throughout the day. Yeah, my skin just looks so flawless once I use that powder. I have to say the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder and the Kevin Aquan, where is it? Do I have it here? Do I have it here? The Kevin Aquan Foundation Balm. Those two are like holy grail spot covering items that you need to have in your makeup bag if you suffer with blemishes, especially like big ones like this. They are just two of my go-to products. For my birthday makeup, those were the two products that I actually used together and you can see what that looks like in the try on my birthday dress video. It is full on, full glam, but the two of them work so well together at making your skin look so flawless. So for like a special occasion, both work really well together, but on an everyday basis, they work really great separately as well. So now I'm adding some of my Fenty Beauty 
bronzer over my cheeks but i also use this angle brush and make sure i apply it like underneath my eyes as well that way you can go a bit heavier on the bronzer and it not be too obvious and same with my upper lip as well not somewhere you would normally think to apply bronzer but it really works i'm also just using a darker bronzer to contour my nose just very very lightly i find this whole look really starts coming together once you apply the bronzer because it works really nicely with the warm tones in the eyeshadow. I'm also gonna add a little bit of blush. This is Bare Minerals Gen Nude That Peach though. And I really like this, especially with this eye makeup look because it's got an orangey, well, it's obviously like peachy. So it's got that warmth to it that works really nicely with the more orangey eyeshadow. And recently I've been really applying my blush like fully to the apples of my cheeks and then also taking it up my cheekbone. And this blush is matte as well, so it works really, really beautifully. And because it has that peachy tone, it works really nicely if you wanna pop a little bit on your nose or on your temples. Once that's done, what I like to do is just apply powder just underneath my contour. I really hope I'm doing this okay because I'm doing this in the viewfinder. Pray for C's. Also just adding a little bit to the top of my nose as well. It's Friday, what the hell? And then I'm just gonna chill for a little bit. Add some lip liner, do some yoga, some baking, you know. No, I'm not really. I'm obviously kidding about everything except the lip liner. I've been getting a lot of questions about what is on my lips lately. It is always KKW at the moment. I just live for their lip liners. They do the best formula, the best colour. I am really hoping that they make UK shipping like a much more easily available thing soon. You know, like having a UK stockist, that would be ideal i'm hoping seeing as kkw has just been is it bought out or Cody have just bought shares i'm hoping we'll see them come to europe obviously the shipping is worth it for me i already know that i love their lip liners i took the plunge and ordered a ton when i did my first order but if you're on the fence all of the shipping and duties is a big step to take but their lip liners have just become my go-to on a daily basis now and they last for such a long time they're a really great comfortable matte formula so i used the shade 2.5 and now i'm going over with peach peach 2 which is the darker of the peaches and i really love how this looks i feel like peaches are a really nice way to do an autumnal nude lip without having to go for a dark shade because i'm really not into dark lipsticks and then just adding a little bit of peach one to the center and this is where i leave it on days when i'm wearing a mask because they're so matte and I find these get the least transfer onto my mask. I also wear silk masks. I'll link to them in the info box, but they're silk slip masks. And I personally think they're really great. I don't have any more spots than I would normally. I obviously don't, I don't go to work in a place where I need to wear a mask. So mask knee is just not something that I think I'm going to experience because I wear them for such short periods of time. But for me, I do find them more like breathable, but I also find I get less transfer from the rest of my makeup with them as well. But yeah, a matte lip and matte skin is pretty much where it's at for getting minimal transfer. So I'm just brushing away my powder, which is really sunken. And then finally I just use my squirt concealer brush to tidy up my lip line. If I'm doing a really glam look, I also use this to reshape my bottom lip. So that is makeup done. I'm really glad that this part of the video is over because I will tell you now it's not been smooth sailing behind the scenes but now i'm going to zoom you out and i'm going to show you how i've been doing my hair recently because i've had so many requests for a tutorial on the slight wave that i've been putting through my hair so i have my ghds ready i am not going to be using the ghd rise for this one this isn't how i get these waves i tend to use the ghd rise more for if i want like a slight french girl wave but it's definitely very different to the type of wave that i've been getting all of the requests on but the ghd rise is my go to for the roll under bob it's just it is the best for that if you want like a really great blow dried look whether you've got long hair or short hair it is it's everything so what you need for this hairstyle is actually very very simple very minimal you just need a pair of straighteners i have the ghd platinum plus stylers these are really great for doing a curl because they have a rounded shape on the outside. I also have a hairbrush. This is the Tangle Teaser wet brush. The wet brushes, I use them dry. They are the best of all of the Tangle Teasers. And then I have a GHD Carbon Anti-Static Comb. I've already heat protected my hair. You need to do that, that is an essential. I swear that curls are actually the devil when it comes to keeping your hair nice and healthy. Straightening, I find because I'm brushing the hair first and then straightening, there's not a lot of tangling going on. Whereas with a twisting motion, 
really you are creating more movement and therefore more tangles and using heat at the same time and i just i just don't think it's the best for your hair so i don't do this often be kind to your hair basically kids or you'll end up with a bob like me unless you want a bob in which case still please look after your hair so i start off by just running the straightener over my hair it gives you a nice straight end as well which is important to me and then around halfway down the hair i just do a half twist so my straightener will be like this and i just twist it twist it backwards let's call it a 90 degree twist and you end up with this little wave and side note if you have a bob like me it is going to be difficult to do the under layers if you already know how to do curls with the ghd this will be really simple because it's basically like half the motion you just don't follow through with like an entire curl and if you're not familiar with using straighteners to curl the basic principle is you are twisting away from your face at the front and then alternating your twists towards and away which i'll show you as we get through the upper layers with the lower layers i don't worry too much about which direction the curls are going in really because it doesn't matter they're not really being seen you just want a little bit of movement and i'm not particularly precise with this at all i was kind of trying to get that like french girl hair vibe which now after watching uh, emily in paris you're probably going to hear me saying french girl vibe more than ever if you haven't seen the netflix show i definitely recommend you give it a watch you either love it or hate it i love it but just know if i'm talking about french girl vibes i'm obviously not talking about emily from the show because she is like so blair waldorfy it's unreal but everyone else in the show has like the best style so we've got a longer layer now it's a little bit easier to show you i start halfway down the hair always so important don't start at the top like you would with like a normal curl and i'm not curling the ends i'm specifically leaving the end like straight so we're literally just starting in the middle and doing a half turn so we've got that that is literally <laughs> that is it it's funny i actually don't love my hair like this but so many of you loved it i couldn't not do a tutorial in it for today's get ready with me half twist hold i just kind of hold it for a second so that you get a more like defined wave to it because it will drop and with the back part of my hair i literally just curl away from my head do a half twist there we go so obviously a lot of people were very nice about this hairstyle and i'm very grateful for that but i did find it really interesting one of the most common things that people have said as a compliment with this hair is it makes you look younger and it really got me thinking about how we use youth as like a marker of like positivity if that makes sense i was getting really deep this morning because it came up in my comments whilst i was having my coffee and i was like god that's that's come up a lot and it's funny i think the reason it sticks out to me is because for me it's just not necessarily the goal like if your goal in terms of like your look is to always look young then aren't you going to be less and less happy every single day for me i just want to look my best in whatever way that means to me because that's changeable throughout my life but if my goal is to look young then the more time passes the more unhappy i'm going to end up being sort of this parting out because this is a Date. okay so we are finally on to the top layer of my hair i always give this a quick brush through because these are the layers or the parts of my hair that have the most damage to them so i like to make sure that we've got as minimal tangles and knots through them as possible so close to being all my natural color as well guys like i'm so excited about that so as you can see with the front parts of my hair i've given them a much more like loose twist this avoids the look looking too done if that makes sense so literally like a half turn, but like very, very gently. One thing I'll definitely note with this hairstyle is that it looks so much better when your hair is a little bit greasier. Like my hair right now, it's freshly washed as of last night and it is just a bit too shiny for my taste. I think especially, oh no, we have a curtsy. This is why you don't go too far down because you end up with a poodle curl. If we don't like a curl, we just pull it out like this. But this is something that I've definitely found, especially with having more of my natural hair color and much healthier hair is how much shinier it is. But therefore like this kind of like messy beachy style doesn't work as well. So that is how I get these waves. As you can see, they're looking very very uniform right now it's not personally for me what i do is i take my wide tooth comb and just run it through my hair and then i think for me personally i'm going to get some hairspray and maybe some dry shampoo and just work it through and give it a much more like beachy volumized look so i'm going to use the way soft hairspray this this hairspray is one of the banes of my life because it sticks to everything i only generally tend to use it in my bathroom because of this but it's a really good hairspray and it has a little bit of a texturizing element to it as well so two birds one stone don't need to use 
dry shampoo. Almost got it in my eye. It smells really nice though. I actually really like the smell of this one. Don't love the smell of the medium one. So yeah, that is how I'm getting the kind of wavy little bob. It's definitely not my favourite look for me personally and to be honest now that you've all said it makes me look younger I probably will avoid wearing this if I ever don't want to be ID'd because I always forget my ID and actually now I know if I don't want to be ID'd which hairstyle not to wear. So yeah I hope that was helpful. Next I'm going to pick my outfit and show you what I'm wearing today. Okay so this is the outfit. I actually had a lot of fun putting this together. I knew the tones I wanted to go for and actually this outfit turned out better than I could have ever expected. I put a like, jacket to go with it as well. So the boots I'm wearing are from Zara. My jeans are from Topshop. They are the Sydney jeans. Then my top is from And Other Stories. I love this top. I need to show you. It's so gorgeous. It's that real like beautiful kind of sweetheart neckline, but like the neckline is quite wide, which we are seeing a lot of at the moment. I actually have a similar one from this from Nuim, which is a sustainable brand as well. And if you want to shop from there, I will link an alternative to this, but the color is more plummy and I really wanted to go for that rich burnt ready color. I just think it's so gorgeous. The cut out back is stunning. Do I wish I'd fake tan my back before I did this? Yes, but did I have time? No. But anyway, I love this top. It's just so, so beautiful. I will link it if it's still in stock because oh, it's just stunning. I really love it. And then for my bag, I've gone for the Chloe Tess. I think this is the Tess bag, which they had a moment a couple of years back. This really doesn't get the love that it deserves, but really in autumn, this bag comes into its own. I think a croc effect always works so beautifully for autumn. I don't know what it is about a croc effect in autumn, but I live for it. And the brown tone works really, really beautifully for this time of year, but also throughout the summer as well. And I love the thick strap on it. It's gorgeous. This outfit has a little bit of like a nod to what my brain says my version of countryside chic would be, even though we all know that it's completely unrealistic and I would never dress like this if I actually was in the country because we've seen what I wear when I go away to the country and it's not this. But the bag and the boots really add to that vibe and I just love this outfit. I've also got a jacket, please hold. This particular item of clothing is just the gift that keeps on giving, really, isn't it? I actually already have the coat that I would wear for the winter version of this lined up. However, it's very warm today, so I'm really sticking with the autumnal weather vibes. So those of you who have seen my Zara haul will remember this one. I wore it as a dress in my Zara haul, but this can also work really, really nicely as a jacket. You can do it up or just like throw it together and tie it in the way that I have. I do like it just thrown together. It's nice and relaxed, but I think it's also nice to see the buttons as well. Do my little TikTok time method. And there we go, we have a full autumnal outfit. It's so lovely, very warm. This keeps me really, really nice and warm. It's the perfect autumn, winter kind of transitional piece. And I love the way that outfit works with the jacket, but also works really beautifully without it as well. Also, can we take a moment for the fact that I have styled this with jeans, because I know a lot of you have been asking to see more jean styling. And I do think denim styling you will see coming a lot more from me over the next kind of month or so. I'm really getting back into wearing jeans, which is so weird. This is the first time this side of this year that I've worn a skinny jean. I think the last time I wore a skinny jean was, I think it was February. So yeah, this is the first time this side of the year that I've worn a pair of jeans. They work really, really beautifully with the boots. I love these boots so much. So yeah, I'm very happy with this outfit. I feel like it all works really, really perfectly together. I think this top is definitely gonna be a key piece in my 2020 autumn winter wardrobe. It all works so nicely for like dinners out, but also day to day, it works beautifully just with a pair of jeans and boots. As you can see right now, you could switch out the boots for something a little bit dressier if you were going from like daytime to kind of like an evening dinner. I think this is my perfect autumn outfit. But anyway, that is where we are going to leave this video today. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know if there are any other videos that you want to see this month. I am open to suggestions because I have very few ideas. But yeah, I hope you're all having a really lovely day and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.